Thank you for joining me for this episode of Out of Country. Out of Country is a philanthropy volunteer working travel series where I get to interview ordinary people who are doing extraordinary projects, volunteer work, and even philanthropic work in other countries. As you can see, this is the COVID edition, and I have the sheer pleasure of introducing to you Wal Badawi, amongst other things, a professional speaker who I met here living in Calgary. Wal, welcome to the show. Thank you. So happy to be here. I'm so delighted to have crossed paths with you just last week because I had asked you a question about you know backdrops for doing these professional presentations and since this is mid-April we are still at the peak of social isolation for this COVID that's been taking the globe uh, unfortunately in a panic-stricken way but I think many of us are doing well we're abiding by the isolation so let's get to you now now you Normally, you reside in Calgary, but where are you right now as we're speaking? I moved uh, about uh, nine months ago back to my home country to assist my mom. So I'm right now in uh, Egypt. Um, I assumed a professorship position at one of the leading research universities here. And uh, since September, August, September, I start to mangle with uh, junior uh, students who are being like, I believe they were delighted to see somebody like me, because you understand that from the, this side of the ocean, we are on two different sides of the ocean. You are on the right. west side, if I, I look at you from my side, and you are on the east side, if I look at, you from, look at Egypt from your side. So people here always have the dream of uh, migrating to new country and building in new countries. People, they lost the connectivity to their own countries, except with COVID. When COVID came in, and I will tell you a few interesting things. And uh, we have been here sure. in this country since uh, 14th of uh, March. Very aggressive um, process from the government, very aggressive rules, very uh, hands-on. They've been doing so many things. And uh, I spend here uh, some time with this young generation coming in. And it sounds like I'm doing my mission by being a flagship of I cannot say success or failure. However, a flagship of an experience where people actually learn from it a lot. So. Normally, you were residing in Calgary, where I live. But how did this uh, opportunity present itself to you to go over to, to Egypt? I just basically, my mom is coming to a critical age and uh, she needs support. I'm the only son. So at a certain point, you have to value what you want to value. So I basically value to, okay. to stay with my mom. And I, can, I cannot tell you how much I got reward out of the universe from that, for that. Uh, we call it here God uh, or whatever Lord, whatever you call it. But uh, when you really take care of your loved ones, uh, you will find opportunities will just show up on your way. Like you, wow. you don't plan to do it. Yeah, so it's uh, just, to support, just to not, as the same style as you know me, I don't want to have regrets in the future. So in yeah, the right yes. time before having regrets. <laughs> God, God forbid anything bad happening to anyone. It's just like we wish everybody on this show and everybody watching this as live or, or as a recorded uh, to be safe and well and happy and having no problems. Because of social isolation, you went over there uh, as well. You are a, a university professor, but because of the social isolation, most universities, if not all around the globe, are, are not teaching in person anymore. So, so what happened here was um, what we call it generating the panic management mode because life is about business management and we always do the crisis management. And I hope the audience will understand that. So here what I noticed is people start to get inside the PM, which is the panic mode, which basically they didn't know what to do. So our university was really wise enough they advanced the uh, mid-term uh, mid vacation and they advanced it by two weeks and the government here shut down the universities. They didn't really shut down the universities. What they said is education process is on hold, which is a very flexible. I don't know it's really very wise things to say. So they said mm -hmm. they are on hold, like schools, universities are on hold. What does it mean on hold? No education, no learning process, no education process. And they went in and they, they spray and they cleaned and they take for, for all the buildings. So our university just they said, okay, so instead of having two weeks vacation early April, we are advancing them to late March. 
and we will start to reconvene around uh, April 5th, I believe. And uh, we, we, we don't know yet what will be the process, but let's practice. So what we end up doing now is we record video sessions to replace the courses, tutorials and labs. Here I'm talking about a very hand-on discipline because I am in a computer science, computer engineering, kind of IT over, like I'm not in a, in a theoretical or into an art major, I'm in a really hands-on major. So imagine I have a teaching assistant who will stand and video record a lab to implement a specific program or an, a circuit experiment online. So okay. once we have the video recording, we, we reconvene with the students over um, co uh, collaborative tools. We have been selecting Zoom. There are co co uh, universities here that use something called Microsoft Teams. There is also co um, co class, Google or Google Class, and there is also WebEx. Then what happened here is all international companies have been moving to work from home. And then all uh, uh, government uh, operated uh, businesses and uh, facilities, they have been working at 50% capacity. So suddenly you have the very crowded roads are half empty or half full, whatever you call it. So what happened now is we have uh, an interactive process with the students. They go, they watch the videos. Normally, uh, 50, uh, one hour classroom will be 50 minutes of interaction. Usually it's like they said 30 to 40 minutes of videos, okay. Sometimes it's one hour, sometimes it's 40 minutes, based on whatever content. The students will download okay. it. I give my students a special because I have my own podcast and stuff like that. So. I start to launch the videos and then take the audio track, put them on podcast. Uh, you have to understand few things. Number one, which is one of my publications coming out, that video-based education and education over um, systems like Google, like um, um, Zoom, these are not the standard pedagogies of learning. Like we know as a professor, we have been practicing so many times. You go in the classroom, for example, you do, you do housekeeping. So, oh, you sit in your seat, Turn on your phones, guys, put in vibration, look at me, watch the screen. All of this material, we say it. So now, what is the housekeeping for a video recorded classroom? It's completely different. Right. So right. Um, there is a pedagogy uh, exchange involved. My uh, public speaking and my work with Win Your Brand and doing all of these uh, classrooms virtually and stuff like that, I believe they helped a lot. So I, um, the other aspect is, will the, will the technology collaborate or not? You are talking here about country, which is amazingly number 20 in the largest number of users over the internet, worldwide. So Egypt, no matter, I cannot say Egypt is not as good as Canada because I'm, I have both hearts, you know, both of them are in my heart. But with all the challenges in this nation, we have about, I believe they were like 53 or 59 million users on yes. the internet. Canada population is 37 million or 35 million. So it's not even there. So you have these people online. One of the challenges is how to supply them with video, how to supply them with um, uh, interactive solution like Zoom or like uh, Team. Uh, we use here also something called Microsoft Streaming. We call, I use YouTube, Microsoft Stream for video. I use podcast and there are like 10 different uh, suppliers on the podcast. Uh, um, like, um, iTunes or what have you and we say you can go download the PowerPoint slides or the PDF listen to the podcast or you can watch the video and uh, I synchronize sure. them I give them the alternatives so, so you have a bit of gorgeous. you have also a technology challenge because majority of the people here don't have laptops majority of them will have a very fancy phones Android based in, at the most Okay. because you know like uh, iPhone here is not as popular as North America. So you have now people who don't have laptops in computer engineering, which is, people cannot believe it. There are actually professors, like we learned about very senior professor in IT and information technology who don't have laptops because they have computers at their desk supplied by the university. They have a computer at their, uh, the, where they do consultation and they have computer at home. And some but no laptops. They have no laptops. So some of them, they don't have even computer at home because they are wow. in the, off the consultation office if they have work or they have a computer. And, and we also found out that there are so many students, which is a very interesting part of one of my colleagues were, were telling me, 
you have like 300 students in one class in advanced course in computer engineering and uh, you don't have teaching for them in a proper way so what will happen is usually 50 to 80 will show up they will videotape and and they put the, the videos over to youtube so this fellow in particular he found out for the curriculum he was teaching for so long the last five years whole lectures the questions comes again to the quality of this lecture because these lectures were meant to be in person having a lectures on audio only or video only it needs the quality of a pedagogy. And however, these people are in the panic mode, they need content. So I would tell you like in three to four months coming, this country will have all digitalization. They have the digital transformation that nobody believed on it because now yeah, all yeah. universities are moving to this direction. And the, biggest, wow. yeah, and the biggest challenge for sure is how to exam them, like how to run tests, how to run exams, um, even, um, what happened in the lower level of education, like uh, secondary and primary schools, they give them uh, research projects and the, mm -hmm. the, the, pivot, the pivot or the key uh, years, like the, the grade 12 and whatever, uh, they will run them exams over iPad and they give them uh, free um, GSM cards so they can put the same card in, the, in a laptop or, in, a, sorry, or in, a, in an iPad and they can go over a national exam completely on iPad. And they run tests, I wow. believe they run tests last week, like four days of uh, pre. Wow. Yeah, so it's a very interesting uh, phenomenon. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, both my wife and I work for companies that uh, we can work fully from home. Well, this is our fifth week working from home. Uh, my company, we use Teams exclusively. And it's just, uh, it's a thing I said a while ago that there's going to be a lot of good things that's going to come out of this social isolation uh, because of COVID. And it's also interesting the fact that you decided to go back to Egypt about nine months ago and it got you started in this and now you can help them out now, the university, at turning a lot of their content into uh, digital video format content, which will probably stay on once we come out of this social isolation, probably in the next uh, few months. Yes, and um, one thing you have to also look at here from this angle, uh, we talk about um, cultures differences. So the social fabric of here, I like to always call it social fabric. It's not a religion thing, it's not a behavior thing, it's just a social fabric, just call it like your shirt, you have the fabric, it's a black, blue colors, whatever it is, okay? So yeah. Social fabric of here, people are not used to be recorded. Recording is bad, it's always... Um, really? Yeah, it's always law enforcement. Like people are not here standing in front of cameras. So uh, male and females, they have lots of concerns about their personal acceptance over audio recorded. So now wow. people are challenged to have, they call it even uh, voice over PowerPoint. Like for me, I do video live and I have videos, I have the PowerPoints, I do the share. I do a few things and uh, I also have a small bed where I connected and then I can write notes. So I'm having my own gear because we have been doing it for five years, if you remember. Like it's not, uh, it's not just for us the first time. Ex ex exactly, uh, here you've done a lot of professional speaking. You've done a, a lot of your own videos. So now it all comes together with the academic setting. Yeah, so, so the interesting part is, or one of the challenges now is everybody has the video content. Now you are now have the capability of comparing this video content. Now you have to, ch to change the mentality because for the longest time we know from the authority that's blended learning or blending learning which electronic and in person is not acceptable. Um, remote learning or e-learning is not accredited at all. Like even if you go to a classroom overseas, they need to have the uh, entering, interest, entering visa and stamps. People here are very sensitive to any remote education. Now they are okay. pushing you in this direction. So running the, the private universities and the non-for-profit organizations and the, the non-government university, running them in this way, it's a challenge because the students can come and ask you, you have like, like in Canada, we have Azabasca. Azabasca is a very common uh, online university. Uh, so why do they join this university, not Azabasca? Why they go to the AUC, American University in Cairo, and not Azabasca University in uh, Canada, because both of them are online. Mm. So running, moving educational sure. system into the online space, it has its own um, 
challenges and it has its own reorganization because now if you create the content, there are classics or there are basic basic courses, they don't change. Circuits 101, circuits uh, two, uh, mass and mass, uh, differential equations, even digital image processing and digital video processing, um, data mining, all the courses that I'm teaching, they will not change in three to five years and they are across so many universities. So why do you have multi-professor doing the course? Just a very simple question. Uh, sure. Yeah, so we, have, we, we are expecting lots of changes in the way uh, we operate. And it'll be a good time to actually uh, enforce or to bring in, develop standards and then uh, standardize on those standards to maintain the high quality of uh, e-learning, uh, learning uh, over uh, distances like this. And I imagine most of your students in Egypt, they're, they're in the city anyways, correct? Uh, not not necessarily. Like uh, we have been uh, watching some challenge individuals because the electricity is still uh, going in a very smooth way. Like I don't believe there is more than like one hour of no uh, no no power for within the last months. Um, even uh, okay. food supplies, you go, you find the government. It seems that the government have been bombed or making it simple. So there is no lots of lineup anywhere. You feel like everything is ready. However, you have some, yeah, because you, you, you have to understand that when people here cannot find their basic needs, they line up for bread. No, there is no lineup on bread on bakeries. The, the, like things are seen yeah. to be sufficient in the two, three cities I have been moving across. However, for the internet, it's still challenging because majority of the people having the internet over their, their iPhone or their mobile, not on a computer. Yeah. The landline internet right. never had the speed. So right now, like right now I'm running here, I have uh, five companies supplying five different internet just as a backup. And uh, mm. there was one scenario where I have to switch to another one, uh, that's it. But other than that, it sounds that the infrastructure is keeping it up. However, the mentality of dealing with the issues, like for example, when you talk about the students, and this is coming also with my paper, like this is what drove me to write this uh, paper and publish it, because if you have a student who's taking two hours of course, two hours of lab and tutorial, the four hour uh, recorded, you absorb more than the four hours in person because you okay. basically sit there and the focus on the movie. Then you get them into an interactive sessions of four hours, you talk about eight hours. Then you give them two hours of office hours just for more questions, these are 10 hours. The students, when they come to you in the classroom, they come late, they leave early, they want to be here to sign, they rule with their friends, they only absorb from you between around 10 to 12 minutes of, uh, of knowledge. On videos, there are 70 to 80% statistics, statistics short, 70 to 80%. Really? Because it's more focused, I guess. It's more focused and they also have the power to replay. So one of the biggest question is, I, for me, I speak English for so long. So when I come to technical material, I switch to English. But if I have an Arabic speaking audience or French speaking audience, I start to explain in their language and I say terms and terminologies stop me I will explain it so when I set recorded on my own I have 99.99% uh, or maybe 100% English content the students do not accept that because they used to have the bilingual part now when you come to the interactive session you start to speak in English and hear a little bit of of Arabic and then you start to respond and then you start to get into the the Anglo Arab or the uh, Arab English, if you can call it, which basically yeah. words yeah. carries among two languages on a vocal, not on a terminologies or on a spelling. So it's sure. the same vocals in a different language. So, so this is one of the challenges between the audience and the speakers or the professor. So when you're when you're teaching these classes uh, online over Zoom, they are live, or do you also record them uh, so that the students can pull them from the library? Uh, electronic library and watch them any time that's good for them? We do both. So you basically both, first, okay. you record the courses pre-meeting. Pre, pre and then in the meeting, we we have the recording. And then we start to run as a Q&A or re lecturing And at the end of the meeting, you start to have the video. So you end up having lots of uh, video content. I did one mass one time and I proved that the students need about 105 hours a week to carry five courses in a specific setting. 
And this without exams, without assignments, without studying. That just to follow okay. up on listening to all the content and having all the meetings one time. Which That's is, a pretty busy week, 105 hours in a week. Yeah, basically <laughs> he's doing nothing and he doesn't, he didn't have his own Facebook, he didn't eat, he didn't talk to his. So being in the panic mode, somebody, I believe someone in a very few months or weeks will stop and say, if you want to run these systems online, it has to be done in slightly different way, respecting the time of the student. Also the panic and the mood of everybody. Like, I don't think the mood you have is very positive. I believe you also mm. uh, gave up on the, on the pattern of sleeping. You also gave up on the, um, on basically everything, you know, okay? <laughs> like, like, it's the same Every, here. Everything is tipped around. Like everything is new. And I think as, as we come out of the social isolation, I think a lot of things will change and education through universities like this will also change for the better, of course. Yeah, and it also co up with uh, like, if you look at individuals here who are very skillful, their challenge is to always find uh, work remotely with companies overseas. They always uh, sure. challenge to work in international and uh, multinational companies here where they communicate overseas to the, other to the other headquarters of the company. So I, I did so many talks to position this opportunity for the students is to prepare for the future. Uh, however, we still mm. uh, have the question of, um, do they really can open their microphone? Like getting students to open the mic and have an interactive sessions, it doesn't work. Full interact, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And um, one no. thing uh, I also can say, I spoke about the infrastructure capacity uh, remember, we usually on purpose turn off the videos. I know I cannot turn it off here now because you, you want to record videos, but we turn it <laughs> off. I need video. Yeah, because you talk about uh, close, close to like 350 mega, megabyte per hour. So if you buy a package of uh, six, gigabit, uh, six gigabyte for your phone, you cannot watch five courses um, <laughs> a week. Uh, on a week. That's true. And, and these are students on uh, budgets and uh, data on a mobile phone can add up to quite a price for them. Yes, and uh, the other thing is uh, you cannot even have storage to save this material. Like, like it's, it, is, it, it puts the actual material capacity into a different scale. Yes. Because you talk about a yeah. production of 30, 40 professors on a regular basis, they put out about 20 to 30 hours of video weekly. So you know, then this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this university is a top, uh, you know, one of the top universities here, but it's not the big university. The university can easily collect so many hours of video, could be competing like YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, it's, uh, we, we had uh, a startup uh, competition and uh, I bought some of my, vid my video codex was one of the sort of bunch of the students. And we were actually proposing to build a, a local. Um, there's also some other aspects to this particular dilemma, which I'm not sure how sensitive you are in Canada, but I believe we were sensitive to it and I explain why we were sensitive. But I want people also to understand that. Um, there are national security issues which prevents you from sure. sharing first and second year school education or university education outside your country. Because people in like uh, biology and uh, people who, who study local species, they are putting this material out. In, sure. in Canada, I remember when I had my, one of my companies doing uh, license plate detection and uh, re automatic reading, we have been asked for verification. So we found this company in, uh, in Arizona where it will be a very cheap uh, or a very cost effective for us. So we said in the proposal, we are using this company. So I believe the... The chief of Calgary police called me to his office this day and he said, sir, you cannot do that because privacy acts in Alberta prevents this particular information to cross the border. So the concept of cloud is great. I love to see you. Uh, we talk about it here. I love to see you here. However, when you talk about uh, political science, when you talk about uh, national and local and the localization training and the issues. It's sensitive going over borders it's sensitive to going, other yeah. countries. Yeah, so having a cloud running, I believe the clouds here runs mainly from uh, from Dubai or from UAE. There is no cloud in 
in Egypt, as I understand, I didn't do my homework well, but as I understand, the clouds here coming from somewhere else. I know also in yeah. Canada, we have we don't have a cloud west, but we have a cloud east in Quebec. But there is no cloud west. We always use uh, um, one of the Google clouds, which is not really in the west. So having this kind of, I believe, and this will be valid for all countries. Some people who like, you know, the people who like to record everything and have this recording of your phone calls. <laughs> These people are not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're also you're also there in a capacity where you can give direction and set standards and uh, build governance for uh, building this uh, online content for the university in, in Cairo. Yes, but I'm not with that capacity. I always say I, I share my experience and my, what happened to me in the past and you guys can decide because I cannot deal with the local authority. I don't have the mindset yet to deal sure. at this level yeah. of local authority because these people, because we have been disconnected from the system for 23 years. So sure. you have to, to surround okay. with people. However, when you talk about COVID-19 and what will happen in the future, there are so many will happen because people have to realize that the business is not as usual. Like, I would ask you, like, why do you even need the universities? Why do you need even offices? If you can say, I and my wife, my wife and I have been working for five weeks right now from home. Sir, mm. why do you need to go to your office? Right. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. Maybe in a, maybe in a, in a university uh, setting, you will only need a room for them to come in at the finals and write the final exams in person. And you may change the final exam and they make it as a learning exam, as a take home exam. You and I have been in universities in our time and there was this selected courses, if you remember, and we used to do yeah, exams. Yeah. So I even have a right. discussion yesterday and I wrote in my Facebook, I had a discussion, it was, it was early today. Uh, we have been right now is uh, late uh, Thursday night. So we are right now uh, 11 after uh, close to midnight and tomorrow will be Friday here. I know you are still early in Calgary. I had a discussion today with somebody and uh, the exams online shall be changed from being a punishment to the student. It's not to qualify the students, it's to help the students to accelerate learning. Because you, people, students here, they have WhatsApp group, they have so many other access online, which we didn't see in Canada. Okay. So. Yeah. So you have to, so things will scale in a different way that somebody will realize that these exams are no longer examine the quality of absorption of knowledge is basically to build learning. So in this way, sure. yeah. uh, the exams will be, so you may not even need the students for the exams. But that's the question, if you remember, uh, I'm not, I, I believe you were in these meetings when we talked about the new uh, Big Up and, uh, Big Up and Run from uh, model which was running in like superstore and the wall and the walmart where you make an order online then you pull over with your yes. car and hold the material and even we spoke about yep. having the grocery stores will no longer have aisles and you have just a small yep. aisle for bakery and the fresh things and the rest will be behind the wall and you basically somebody will get you the boxes and you pick up them from a small outlet and we have been yep. talking about this transformation and to be honest with you in, in where I live right now, all restaurants are shut down. It's only home delivery. And all shisha, by the way, shisha and hookah are forbidden by the, camp, by the country. The authority here does not let anybody publicly smoke shisha or hookah because one of the, really? one of the, one of the way to spread the virus, it's believed from it because it weaken your lungs and it open up. So your lungs will be, able, will be absorbing the virus right away. So wow. on 14th of March, one of the decree from the, the presidents and the prime ministers here is to ban across of the whole nation. Okay. Any public smoking of hookah or shisha, so there is no shisha bar anymore. And then they went gradually, like what happened wow. in camp, to close or to shut down all uh, social clubs. They shut down all restaurants. Uh, it's not yes. because of recommendation. Yeah. It's a complete shutdown. So it brought... Yeah, and... and, and and the grocery stores, I mean, you do your order online and they tell you when you pick it up, you drive by the curb, you give them your uh, number or confirmation number and they bring it out to you. So I think something like that might stay longer once all this social isolation is done. 
Yes, and it started uh, last year in Calgary or two years ago, and they were charging like $7 or $12, and they had the promo for free for the first openings, and they have this uh, sure. specific stall. But what this will do is you are transforming the whole store into a warehouse. So for their operation, exactly. it's cutting their cost by one third. Sure. Can you, can you imagine yeah, like, like you basically get all the front of the store gun and only manage the back. And you can also have to imagine how many uh, workers has to let go because nobody will be able to stack the shelves as before. So it's, exactly. So yeah. it's, uh, it'll be more like a, just a distribution center. Yes, so. yes, it will be like a, a, a distribution centers. And at that point, uh, one of the things we're talking about also here is uh, why do I work for you if I can work for somebody who pay me more and both of them are from the same uh, uh, seat in my on my couch. And uh, I want to just tell you a joke here. Uh, there was this other, sure. like here we have a curfew, <laughs> like here we have a curfew yeah. started from 7 uh, p.m. to 6 a.m. Now they relax it from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. But they still the stores closes at 5. This will happen okay. till uh, I believe two, three weeks. We don't know yet because it will be expired by sometime early in next week. And then they, they will come with different directions. So I, <laughs> there was this meeting. I had this uh, high profile meeting. It was like nine, nine-ish kind of night. So I went inside my room. I had a, a full suit. And my mom said like, where are you going? I said, I have a meeting. He said, no, no, this is a careful. You cannot go out. I said, no, no, mom. You know the wall by the end of the house where I have my computer? She said, yes. I said, Here's, the meeting will be there. I'll be just, but I have to be in a full suit. That's it. <laughs> dress the part. You still have to dress the part. <laughs> yeah, I had to. Well, well, thank you so much, well, for uh, sharing this uh, time. I know there's uh, what, uh, it's about four here now, four in the afternoon, and it's past 11 there. So it's like a seven hour time shift yeah. and you've probably had a very early day. So thank you again so much for sharing with us. And it's so uh, interesting how Epiphany works. The fact that you went over there like nine months ago and now you're being able to help the university there. Uh, it's just unreal. It's uh, unbelievable. I'm so glad of, uh, you're able to give us uh, this amount of time for us for this uh, Zoom video. My very first one, in fact, for this series. Thank you very much, and I have appreciate that we reconnected. We connected again. We had a good time, and I always remember you and the good time we spent together. And uh, stay safe. And uh, you bet. All my friends and colleagues in Canada and elsewhere, and uh, elsewhere should be staying safe. And looking forward to have more of these and see you in person and say hi to your wife and yeah, yeah. we'll be connected. Thank you. Thank you. We can maybe catch up in another month or two again and uh, hope to see you back here uh, soon. But if not, I mean, we have video, right? Yeah, so sure. thank you so much, Well, All the best and let's keep in touch. Sure. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Then.